screen now. Okay, so I'm I'm presenting my slides now. Uh, just to uh, ask first, can anyone can everyone see my slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so, okay, thank you, thank you, guys. So yes, hello, sir. good afternoon. Uh, thank you again, as the host said. Thank you for sharing this wonderful afternoon with me. Hopefully, uh, this this can be a meaningful experience not just for me but also for others as well especially to those students who are aspiring to start their own ventures okay so just to give a quick background okay so again my name is david molina okay so people call me david people call me mr molina since i'm a teacher but one thing that you should know for, from me is that like you or like some of you or like most of you I am very passionate about something that is uh, very frequent in our culture. I'm very passionate about food. Actually, uh, I started working as a marketing, as a marketer, as a professional marketer in in corporate firms. But along the way, I still have time, and I still try to pursue my passion, which is being involved with food. So. Um, since, since this passion of mine was just a pastime hobby in a way, I started trying to, to make my hobby productive or trying to make something out of it. Okay? So one of, one of the things that I started when I was uh, young, in a way young, but three years younger than I was now, is one of the food blogs that you might know or might not have heard of. Okay? So since I'm very passionate with food, I wanted to experience different types of uh, different types of foods from different cultures and also from the different locations. But every time, it's within the Philippines. Okay, even releases from McDonald's, so sizzling ramens. Most likely, I'd feature unique food because I know that um, that's where all the attention and that's where all the focus of people might want to go to. Okay. So aside from being a lover of food, I am also a teacher, as mentioned earlier. I am a full-time teacher, and I teach entrepreneurship and marketing to both senior high school and college students. Upon, my, upon being an educator, I've also tried to learn from other industry leaders, such as Mr. Josiah Goh. One of, the, one of the most famous marketing gurus in, in the country, and also Mr. Donald Lim, who is actually uh, an executive now of the upcoming Dito Telecommunications. So you might have heard of them since they are very prominent in the marketing industry. And I, I, I try to pass that language, or I try to pass that knowledge on to my students as well, both in senior high and college. And one thing that I, I noticed while I was, I was being uh, a business person and an, an educator is that if you look at it closely, I mean, if you really reflect upon what you try to read and what you try to understand among business lessons, is that uh, when you're studying any business, may, maybe a course, maybe a strand, you belong to ABM or any topic in business, the rule always applies that it's much more much more efficient for you to practice practicality rather than the theory. And I'm not saying there's something wrong with the theory. Okay? It's just that not every situation and not every lesson may apply to your current scenario. Okay? So that's why what, one of the learnings that I've reflected on is that when in terms of practicality, I choose being practical rather than being theoretical. And I try to pass that on also to my students. One of the things that I am very passionate about is not just for me to do business, but also for my students to pursue this similar type of passion. And that I'm so, I'm so in love with the world of business that as much as possible, um, I try to learn about it and I try to update myself so that I can pass on this knowledge to my students as well. And also to the youth, to the younger people. Okay? That's why right now, I'm currently finishing my doctorate degree in San Beda, San Beda Uni oh, it used to be college, but it's university now. So I'm, I'm finishing up my doctorate degree in San Beda University. And yes, there are, like you, 
we are still currently undergoing our online class even if it is a doctorate class. Okay? So technically, my purpose for being here with you today is to try to give you some meaningful insights on the business landscape, specifically some trends, some industrial insights, and hopefully, as the title suggests, hopefully I could give you guys some ideas to innovate on opportunities that you might have right now or that you might encounter in the future. Okay? So before we proceed to learning more about these three topics, I'd like to first give a quick recap of what happened last year or you know what we've been, what we've been experiencing the past year. It's still March, it's still in the beginning of the year. So I think reflecting on what happened last year is is vital towards how we will progress in the following years. So you might have forgotten, but aside from just the, what we're experiencing right now, last year there was a cancel Korea culture trend that was ongoing. I'm not really keen on you know, the Korean culture. I know some of you are, and good for you for being updated about it. But I just wanted to know that this thing happened and it got broadcasted into a national level scale. Aside from that, also, one of the things that you might have forgotten or might have just not noticed anymore is that uh, the Dolomite project that was conducted between uh, June or July last year. Okay? So many people, again, many people shared their insights, shared their opinions. This caught the eyes of the people uh, of the Philippines, especially the people who are uh, you usually browsing through their social media. This was a hot topic. Not only that, it allowed them for some, for some really, really hot topics. Right? There were some, there were some people posing for bikinis, and it also became a trend. And actually, this this uh, lady used to known as the Dolomite Lady is actually now. I think she's an influencer now because she trended. You could actually search her in Google, the Dolomite lady or Dolomite girl, and you'll see some, some videos of her, not just in the Dolomite Sun project. Okay? So that's one notable thing that happened in our country. Aside from that, in other news or in other, in other countries, there was a very severe accident that happened in Beirut that you might have forgotten. So this was the Beirut explosion mid-year, or I think that was, this was August. And I think this was due to the uh, supply of the U.S. in terms of some materials kept underground and then an accident happened and then boom, something bad really happened. It rocked the world. It rocked actually the whole nation. This was actually a, a, a blow towards humankind's, more, uh, humankind's motivation especially in 2020, where we've been experiencing a continuous battering of negative situations. And then this one happened. So it's, it's hard to keep up with times with so many bad news happening. And then all the while, this also happened. Now, I don't know why this happened. I don't know the context of why there was an ostrich in Makati. I see some... Uh, some participants here from University of Makati. So I think you guys know more than me since this happened uh, more nearer than uh, where I was. So maybe you could enlighten me about it earlier, uh, more later. Okay. So aside from these notable moments, I think we should focus on what happened during 2020. What was the big thing that happened? And of course, that was the pandemic. We can't really ignore what happened last year without really talking about the pandemic. The pandemic actually allowed us to change our definition of how we live our day-to-day -day lives. Okay? So the pandemic allowed us to live on stricter rules, more stringent policies, even, in, uh, even introducing lockdowns and quarantines. It's very hard, especially for, for most of you who are very young, to step out of the house and not be uh, detained or reprimanded or get caught in a very tight situation. Because of the pandemic, there were a lot of rules and there were a lot of adjustments that needed to, 
adjustments that needed to be conducted. It even allowed uh, the economy to shut down because of this pandemic. Aside from that, while this was going on, the reaction of people normally was to panic. That's why there was, if you might have noticed, there was a scarcity of supplies, not just for food, but more, more, more importantly for uh, sanitary products, such as alcohol, such as face masks. There was actually a shortage of alcohol for some grocery stores. And in some stores, there, they weren't even selling alcohol at all. Or if there were, they were controlling it into one person per bottle only. Similar thing happened to canned goods, canned products, noodles, everything that we could find. We tried to, or we tried to make sure that we are going to survive towards the pandemic because we don't know when the pandemic will end, technically. Aside from having a scarce, uh, scarce supply of food and materials, it also uh, deviated people towards their daily income their jobs, their day-to-day -day operations. It plummeted the employment rates of our country, resulting to a, uh, to a multitude of people being left without jobs. Jeepney drivers, people in the transport industry, people in the tourism industry, employees within other types of industries, even in food, even in offices, especially uh, especially hit were the people in the or the employees in the hotel, in the hotels, which I think right now is still uh, is still being pressured by this pandemic that we have right now. Uh, also, while this was going on, it was uh, it was inhibited to us the importance of health and safety. The, the aspect of health and safety wasn't that serious for most of us before the pandemic, but now it realigned our perspective, our focus to make sure that we are healthy more than, uh, more than anything in the world. It, it allowed us to make sure that it's, health is the primary wealth. Health is the primary thing that we need to keep to ourselves, that we need to maintain more than our jobs, more than our livelihoods and most of all, more than how we generate income, okay? And aside from that, it allowed us to adjust to some, uh, to some situations where we thought it might be possible to overcome, okay? I think that's one of the brilliance of the Filipino culture is that we are so versatile with any situation that it allowed us actually to provide for Another chapter of the year was, which was the new normal. We were trying to carry on with our lives, accepting the fact that may, maybe the situation will not go away anytime soon. It also allowed us the fact that our personal traits, our personal habits have changed. We used to see people's noses and we used to see people's smiles, but now you could tell a lot from a person just by looking in their eyes. Okay? Um, it allowed us to change our ways of how we look into other types of business as well. It used to be that stores and most merchandisers, when they present sales as high as 50%, there used to be a lot of people. There used to be a high traffic of people in malls during sales events, sales activities, especially if you give, this, give big discounts. But in this case, it's totally, it's totally the opposite we adjusted in another way, okay? And it, uh, it also provides us the knowledge that most of the businesses that were hit by the pandemic, did you know that 43% of businesses had to think or had to reimagine the way they do business? They had to provide something new. They had, they had to, to adjust to this type of situation. Among the 43% 43, 43 of businesses that adjusted, 32% of them found new ways of providing new services or even new products. That's why some of you may, may, uh, may get to be surprised that National Bookstore is now offering alcohol and face masks and other sanitary products within its store when it used to be alco uh, 
National Bookstore was, was just offering office supplies, books, and other, uh, other types of office and school supplies. In which, aside from that, 22% of employers asked their employees to actually learn something new. Not just, not just uh, offering something to the public, offering something to the market, but also they wanted to make sure that the organi organization adjusted to this type of scenario. Most people that you know by now are frequent with gadgets, are frequent with technology. Because it's an it's a necessary it's, it's a necessary necessity it's necessary, it's something that is important. Uh, our mothers, our fathers, our titos, titas used to uh, used to call us when they wanted to call someone or when want, they wanted to install an app on their phone. But right now, most mothers that you see are shopping online, trying to get past what type of sale, trying to look past what type of products they what might want to do. So everyone right now is. Is, is familiar with technology. No one's being left out, okay? And aside from that, aside from being just innovative, you have to face the fact that some businesses, okay, you have to face the fact that some businesses, hmm, yeah, some businesses, the revenue drops for most of the year of 2020. 57% of small businesses or small to medium enterprises reported a revenue loss of up to 30%, which can be very damaging, not just for the business, but also for the whole industry. More than 37%, or at least 37% reported revenue losses of 30% and above, and 7% of small businesses experienced a total loss of revenue or they did not experience any input, any income at all. That is a very, very scary fact, especially if you are a business owner. But if you think about it, if you consider the fact or your current stature right now, you're young, you have this challenging situation, if you ask yourself, what do you think about this situation? What do you think about this pandemic? How would you treat this pandemic? Would you treat it more like a threat? Or would you treat it more like an opportunity? Because even though we recap the 2020, even though I, uh, I mentioned some, uh, some negative things and some challenging things before, it's important still to consider what is your point of view on this one? Because even though some industries are failing, not everyone was keeping in line. Not everyone was falling into despair because of the pandemic. Some actually gained insights. Some gained free time. Those free time equated to opportunities. And if you are one of the people who perceives this pandemic as an opportunity, then maybe this can be for you. Then maybe you can learn more about the situation that we have right now. Then maybe we could proceed to learning more about some of the trends that may help you, some of the industries to get, to, to get you to introduce yourselves to different types of playing fields. And lastly, maybe you could learn what I call the U test just so you know what kind of business idea that you would like to pursue on, okay? So let's start with the first one. Let's start with the trends, okay? So innovation is important, but we have to know that innovation comes from, sometimes comes from trends, okay? In order for us to generate more ideas, we need to review trends carefully, okay? So just to give you a quick background, here are some trends that could help you gain some ideas. Okay, so the first one is the, the trend of being cashless and being contactless during our transactions. We all have experienced something similar to this one. We all have a Gcash account, I assume. We all have an app that allows us to pay without actually going for cash. There's Tons of companies using cashless transactions and using cashless applications. Okay, there's uh, Gcash, 
There's Coins PH, PayMaya, BDO, online online applications, and even banks are starting to go digital. Even if it's the pandemic, actually some banks started during the pandemic. So it's not a total loss situation. If you can see here in this graph, during, 20, during, during the time of 2017 to 2021, which is the year we have today, um, there has been an increase of usage for cashless, cashless transactions in the Philippines. So we, we coined the phrase e-money usage in this situation. So people are adjusting their habits. People are adjusting the way they provide or they go into transactions. Aside from that type of trend, there are, there are now also new opportunities for people who lost jobs before, who were currently in the transportation industry. There were lots of money-making opportunities from, uh, from companies such as Grab, such as Lalamove, such as Food Panda. These types of applications with, which allowed some individuals to still have that sort of part-time make-your-own-money type of scheme in which you could use your own time, your own pace, at your own discretion, how you earn money. And they do it through deliveries. I don't know if some of you uh, appreciate the value of having so many, so many people be in this type of business landscape, be in this type of delivery industry. We all know that it's efficient to order things online, and we all know it's efficient that, uh, to purchase things, to book things, to order through an app, and to provide cashless payments. But without the backbone of the logistics aspect, which is the riders, the delivery men, the people who, all, who every day ride their motorcycles, risk their lives, just to make sure that your product arrives at your doorstep. Okay? So this is another type of trend. The third one, of course, is the start of e-commerce, especially famous to younger the, the younger demograph because it allowed uh, people to have a much more easier platform to conduct business it used to be that if you want to provide or if you want to sell something you had to contact suppliers or you had to put up a store you had to buy merchandise you had to pay rent and then you had to go into business attracting customers along the way but in this case you are provided with a field in which the people are already there, the sellers are already there, the buyers are already there. It's a definite market and it's intangible. No rent, no cost. If you want to add for more placements, you may pay. You may, you may pay to have boosted posts. But it was a very famous, very famous trend in this kind of scenario. The fourth one, of course, is sanitation. Now, before, people were aware of using alcohol every time they wash their hands. But since the pandemic hit, that type of habit rose to new heights. But we're not, when we say sanitation, we're not just pertaining to the usage of alcohol, face masks, and face shields. Okay? The importance of having a sanitary supplier also arose. Some businesses actually offer to condominiums uh, sanitary services such as disinfecting the whole condominium or the apartment or the whole house for a specific fee. So this was actually a trend. Okay? And it's, a, it's still a trend that is happening right now. The, fourth, the fifth one, sorry, is what we call the video, video conferencing, which we are currently doing right now. So Zoom meetings have been very frequent not just in the corporate side, not just for offices, not just for work, but also for other types of industry as well. Did you know that they settled court hearings through video conferencing today? It used to be that you hear a judge bang his, ba bang his gavel onto that wooden, wooden board, but now it's different. You do it through video conferencing. Okay? You defended clients in courtrooms with video conferencing. So it allowed you to make sure that you still utilize or you still use your favorite t-shirt and then below 
you you were wearing either shorts or wearing either boxers underneath. Diba? So it's another type of adjustment that we had to undergo. Next one is the 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 conduct conduction of virtual events. People still conducted virtual events even if there was but there is a pandemic. Just because we are not allowed to go out doesn't mean we don't get to have fun. People still attend events. The NBA actually conducted a bubble just last season in order for the season for the whole basketball season to continue. Okay, and they broadcasted that through online media channels as well. If you might have watched the recent Zack Snyder film, about the Justice League Zack Snyder Cut, it was also featured in streaming services. So it's more of virtual events now than what it used to before. Before, there were concerts, but now there are what you know as e-concerts or silent concerts. The next trend was also not just to, to source uh, materials from other places, but since the pandemic hit, one of the challenges that we have to overcome is the logistics, the delivery aspect of some materials that are vital to some organizations, especially if this, these are raw materials, especially if these are ingredients. Used to, before, uh, before businesses used to source from uh, other countries, such as China, where most, uh, where most ingredients, where most materials come in a very competitive price. Now, since most deliveries tend to be delayed and there are challenges from logistics, uh, from logistics aspects, we wanted to maybe consider sourcing our materials from local. And this actually supported small and medium enterprises. Sourcing from local, shopping from local sources. It allowed us to support not just the big companies, but also support the small businesses, making sure that every entrepreneur coming from, coming from more privileged status or the more challenged challenge status, it allowed us to make sure that everyone has an equal opportunity of gaining income. And last one, of course, is the work from home or online classes. Now, I'm not going to discuss more of this with you because I'm sure you've already had your fair share of online classes. It's March. I think you've, some of you have, uh, have already had enough of online classes. And some of you might be also thinking, huh, I still need to pass that requirement I haven't done, which is due later in the evening. Okay, so later on, I'll tell you why this is relevant, okay? So aside from just analyzing the trends, it's also important for you to know the business landscape, the playing field. It's good to familiarize yourself in a, in a particular aspect first, in a particular place, in a, in a particular field before doing any sort of action, before trying to capture that opportunity. You would maybe want to know some types or some aspects of the industries. So just because the pandemic hit, it doesn't mean that there were, uh, there were a stoppage of business in the country. There are some businesses who were hit badly by the pandemic. And as you see here, one of those businesses or one of those industries is the tourism industry, which right now is still being pressured. Okay. So aside from that, some industries such as financial services, Construction, professional businesses, transport, storage, and food industries has still been on the rise. In fact, the financial and insurance services have adjusted very well towards the situation and even made themselves much more convenient for consumers. You don't have to go to banks anymore. You just have to download the app, deposit in any way that the bank accepts. Maybe you could deposit your money through 7-Eleven. Union Bank actually does that. You can deposit your money through, seven, through any 7-Eleven branches and then your account will be credited in Union Bank. So there were a lot of adjustments that were done. That's why it was very important for us to make sure that the financial and insurance services industry was intact because this type of industry will surely affect different types of industry as well if, if it hindered 
if it if its growth was hindered. Okay. The next one is actually construction. Now I'm not sure about some of you, but if you have tried going through the newly opened Skyway 3 project, I'm sure you were in for quite a surprise. Imagine going through Alabang to Bulacan or Valenzuela in under 30 minutes while appreciating this sort of unique view that we did not know of in Metro Manila. You would maybe want to think, hey, it, this might be a foreign country. Okay? But it's not just because of the build, build, build program that induced uh, the rise of construction and the rise of uh, the infrastructure industry. In fact, in our own business, uh, we just currently finished a project of ours and we are starting to renovate one more commercial space. So the picture you see above is the, fi the finished project that we have and it's ready for occupancy to interested tenants. This one is in Laguna and also in Laguna is the one at the bottom we, which we will try to develop into a commercial industry. One thing that actually prompted me to start uh, my recently started business is real estate because of the boom of infrastructure. There are, there are a lot of people selling property right now and there are lots of people who are considering maybe going out of their way, trying to, be, uh, trying to become independent from their, from their family, family houses or from their family, uh, family backyards. Okay. So mostly millennials are starting to get that type of buying power, trying to catch in on the real estate action that is happening right now. So that's why we started MPM Real Estate to help people not just to sell their land, not just to sell their properties, but also to manage their real estate properties. So that's just recently opened. And aside from the construction business, uh, People also from the professional businesses are still on the rise. So BPO companies, okay, transportation and storage companies are still here, especially since there's still an influx of uh, an influx of products and services going through the country. Actually, if you want to, uh, if you want to get an idea of what a good uh, a good business idea a good business might be, if you have a storage space. I'm not referring to warehouses, huh? but if you have a storage space, maybe you could look into making your station a Lazada hub or a Lazada drop-off station because they actually look for that and they actually uh, keep things in mind about certain locations. Now, if you are here in the Metro Manila, it might be that you might want to reconsider because there are so many Lazada drop-off stations in Metro Manila. But again, I'm not sure. Maybe in your location, it's a different situation. But that's one thing that we are also trying to consider. So I mentioned earlier that we were trying to develop a commercial space. One of the things that's going to be put on that commercial space is a Lazada drop-off hub for sellers of Lazada uh, and for uh, delivery purposes. So one idea also okay, that you might, want to, you, might, you might want to consider. And food services. So again, I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is food. Apparently, the full Filipino culture is also very passionate with food. Who, who knew that if you mixed sushi in the baking oven, uh, there, would, there would be this kind of product that would trend in a ridiculous amount of level. Almost everyone was selling baked sushi for a particular time. Okay. Even ube pandesal was a thing and dalgona coffee was a thing. Okay? So you, you tend to see a lot of people selling these types of foods. Actually, also in my, on my end, <laughs> not again to mention, but um, I, I mentioned earlier that we are very passionate with food, not just me, but also my friends. That's why one of our business, even before the pandemic, one of our businesses was this called a Galing Local Food Store. So we, we sell lots of things that were sourced locally, especially hot sauces, especially uh, mga adobong tahong, sources, uh, uh, people who wanted to 
make their products more known, we tend to sell their products in our food store. Okay, of course for a little fee. But aside from the uh, aside from getting partners to consign their products to us, we also have our own products such as the smoked meats section. If you've ever heard of smoked meats, not just in the United States version of barbecue, because you know in the Philippines when you say barbecue, you use uling and then you use uh, fire the coals and then you try to roast your food there. Um, in, in the U.S. version of barbecue, it's slow cooking. It's like baking your own meat, but it's done in a wood wooden fire. It's done through a smoker. So we offer tons of smoked meats, such as if you've ever heard of the dinosaur ribs or the beef ribs or the Angus beef ribs, which is more, uh, which is larger than most people's hands. That's something that was a trend for us, which sold like hotcakes. And not just, not, whoa. <laughs> not just the beef ribs, but also beef belly. So people who are very into the family occasions, if there was a celebration, they tend to order us from, uh, they tend to order from us these types of, uh, these types of meats, these types of products, especially smoked meats. Because one serving serves at least 10 persons. Okay, so that's how, that's the value for money that you get from it. And not just, you know, not just the big meats, not just beef. We also smoke pork, we also smoke chicken, and even some Pinoy favorites, such as longanisa. So it's still going on right now. Uh, but since it's Holy Week, we tried to stop everything first because it's Holy Week. You know, some people are abstaining to eat meat. And we're trying to see if we can actually sell smoked salmon if you guys are interested in that. Anyway, so that's one business that we I am also currently um, uh, involved with. So the next thing that we want, uh, the, the next thing that I want to inform you guys about is what we call the U test. So, just a quick, just a quick process. It's it's something that answers the question, the undying question to any business student that, uh, what type of business line will you pursue, or if you were asked by someone, what type of business will you do? Most of you, I am sure, will say food. Because the statistics actually say it's very good for people to start in the food industry. But based on the industry, you have to be very careful. You have to evaluate what type of value you're trying to provide to customers because the food industry is very competitive. Yes, it's very easy, easy to start a food business, but it's very hard to stay and maintain the performance of your organization, especially if you're in the food industry. So aside from that, what else can you make as a business? So knowing the industry, knowing the trends, I hope this type of test can give you insights or can give you an idea of maybe what type of business is applicable, is compatible for your lifestyle. So the U test or the YOU test is actually a very easy process. It's actually a very easy process. It's not something for you to memorize law, to memorize further. So when we say YOU test, we just pertain, or me, I just pertain to you, okay? There's not any acronym here. It's just you, I mean you, okay? There's no, there's no acronym, Y doesn't stand for anything, O doesn't stand for anything, U stands for you, okay? So yes, you, I mean, have you considered your condition lately? Have you considered your situation lately? Okay? Because a very good entrepreneur knows how to evaluate his surroundings, knows how to uh, evaluate the opportunities around him, knows how to evaluate his, her, himself or herself. So again, I ask you guys to consider looking at your situation, your personality, your insights, your upbringing, your situation, everything. Consider everything. Okay? And then let's boil it down to these particular questions. Now, in a person, there are very important parts for a person to function. One of them is the brain. Okay. Now, the brain is in charge of so many decision-making aspects. So try asking yourself, what do you enjoy? Okay. 
ask yourself, what do you enjoy? Okay? Because whatever answer you might find in this, in this question, these are going to be called your hobbies. Are you maybe interested in cooking, like me? Are you maybe interested in gaming, which is a very popular segment for most of the younger demographics? Are you even interested maybe on making content? So the, the purpose of this question is, did you know that hobbies can actually be a sor good source of income? Okay? And hobbies are actually less tiring than other types of business. Why? Because your hobbies, if you do it as a business, you tend to be passionate about your hub. You, uh, you tend to be passionate about your hobbies. You tend to be driven by excitement about your hobbies. Because doing your hobbies as a business, you're doing something fun. You're enjoying things. Regardless of the pressure of the business, regardless of the scenarios or the challenges, you tend to still enjoy the silver lining. You tend to be on a more motivational structure, more motivational standpoint. Okay? So that is one question for you that maybe you would want to consider. The next one, in terms of your body, okay? now the heart, is, the, the heart is, is responsible for most of the functions of the body. Now, if you don't uh, have a good heart, then it makes someone weak. Okay? Ask yourself what you are good at. Ask yourself what you're good at because the answer to this question will most likely be your skills, your strengths. Something that you're good at is something that can be your skill, something that can be your strength. Okay? Your strengths and your skills is actually a good source of money as well. Maybe you're good in photography. Okay? Some of you, I'm sure, are very adept in this line of in this line of uh, industry. Maybe you're good in arts. Well, in this case, it's multimedia arts. If not, there's still a lot of avenues for you to consider. Maybe you're, a, you're an organized person. Maybe you're the type of person who likes to make schedules, who likes to plot things in advance. Maybe you could uh, consider having a career in social media management, especially with tons of firms and tons of businesses trying to organize their own thoughts and trying to organize their own content. Maybe that kind of idea can be suitable for you as a business. If not, maybe you could provide other services such as online tutoring, online teaching, translating even. Okay? So these are some of the skills that you could take advantage on. Did you know that freelancing is a high earning medium right now? Especially since the pandemic started, there's an up, uh, there's an up, up, uh, up trend for high-earning freelancers, especially since most of the people are still unfamiliar with uh, utilizing social media, social media tools, and utilizing digital marketing campaigns and the like. Okay, so if in case there are still uh, no business ideas for you here, then maybe you should consider asking yourself another question. By looking at where you stand, ask yourself, where are you, uh, what are you surrounded with? Consider the resources that you have. Okay? Consider the resources that you have. Why? Because maybe you could make money out of some of the resources that you have you might be abundant in something that you could make money on. Or maybe you have an equipment that you could utilize and make money out of. Take note, a good entrepreneur is not choosy about the opportunities. He just knows how to prioritize and how to take things, evaluate things towards having an advantage. But you can't be picky with your opportunities. Okay, let's say after asking yourself those three questions, there's still no idea for you to uh, start a business on. Then maybe you, should change your maybe you should change your perspective. Maybe you shouldn't look at yourself. Maybe you should look at somewhere else. Maybe your outside environment. 
closely look at your surroundings. Okay? Look at your community. Or maybe you belong to a village. Look at your barangay. Look at your neighbors. Okay? These are the things that might give you some insights on what a good business opportunity might be. It just takes a lot of perspective. Okay? So the rule here is, the rule here is you provide or you gain a business opportunity from two methods. It's either number one, you offer something that the community needs, or number two, you eliminate something that is unwanted. Okay? Those two rules, if you consider it carefully, I'm sure can make, uh, can give you a business idea by offering something in need or by eliminating something that is unwanted. If I may give an example, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this one, but I used to, well, I enjoy motorcycles. And during Sundays, I ride with my friends and we go through out of town trips in our motorcycles, okay? So we go through other zigzag roads and we go through what they call Marilake Highway. And um, some of the things that I happened to ponder on was this one, okay? Now, I didn't know it at first when we saw this one because it was a very small coffee shop. And take note, this wasn't actually a shop. This was just a stall. It's a, it's a gray Avanza with a light and offering coffee. People offering coffee. And they were situated along the Marilake Road, along the Marilake Highway, where most motorcycle enthusiasts or most uh, riders go through to relax. Now, what did they do? They actually just offered something in need. They saw an opportunity that, huh, maybe we could do something creative without any cost at all. Just look for like this, guys. Provided a stall, provided a coffee machine, and then they offered coffee. It's a very simple notion, but it offered so much value. The coffee was inexpensive, but it's not just the coffee that made you go there. It's about the experience. Going there, taking the coffee, grasping the view, being with your friends, it made for a very memorable opportunity for a very, very remember, uh, it made for a good remembrance. Even if you guys are into NBA, even Jimmy Butler started his own enterprise in the bubble, the Big Face Coffee, if you guys are aware. Number two, uh, number two, number next one is eliminating something unwanted. So the usage of PayMaya, the usage of apps, the cashless transactions, it eliminated, the th uh, it eliminated the usage of people having to go through ATMs, withdrawing their money physically, and then giving money to the counters. Because of this uh, convenient setup, it eliminated something for us that we didn't even know could be eliminated. Who knew you could pay by using your phone? Who knew that in the next year, next five years, we were all going to be uh, using this type of payment method, okay? Or if this thing is not, uh, if, the, if you're not, I'm sure not some of you are going to make an app. So let's try to scale it down a level. Maybe you could look into your own problems. Did you know, uh, I mentioned before that, uh, I mentioned before that working from home and online classes are a trend. And did you know because of that trend, some students actually make money off of it by eliminating something unwanted? Did you know that some students actually offer services for other students as a uh, commission, writing commission? So what, what other students do is that they post something. If they need an assignment done, they will post something, hey, I need someone to do my thesis. I need someone to do my essay. I need someone to do my this one, that one, something to write on. And then they will pay that student the money. Okay? I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but this is actually happening right now. And it's not disorganized, mind you. There are actually some rates about it. Did you know that a reflection paper will cost you 100 pesos per page? What if the, the teacher required you to have five pages minimum? 
So that's an automatic 500 pesos per page. A learning module costs 100 to 200 pesos, depending on the length. A slide presentation costs 50 pesos per slide. My God. So if you have 10 slides for a particular PowerPoint, especially if the professor asks you to report one chapter, that's going to take you like 20 slides. And that if one slide is 50 pesos, that's 1,000 pesos. Easy. Concept papers for 100 and video editing for 150. See? Now, um, the point here is that I want you to gain ideas. Okay? But you have to remember that ideas are not just, you don't have to be a genius to generate ideas. Okay? Later, I'll tell you the secret in order for you guys to generate ideas. But aside from the outside environment, you should also maybe look into your external environment. But the challenge here is the external environment is something that you can't entirely control. So if you're faced with something similar to this one, maybe the best way for you is to establish, and establish connections, try to get to know people, and then if allowed, if you have enough resources, try to invest in their business so that you also can have a benefit. Okay? So I mentioned earlier, among everything that we've discussed, the YOU test allows you to generate ideas to be more innovative based on the trends that we've uh, aligned and based on the industries that we've encountered. But everything is useless if you don't have this important value of all. And that important value is actually perspective. I have been telling you guys so many ideas, but the, uh, the main point of here is I'm also encouraging you to look at different types of perspectives, not just your own, but also your immediate environment, your outside environment. If not your outside environment, may, then maybe the external environment. You can't run out of perspectives because perspectives are actually the root cause of your ideas. Once you get to know more, once you get to experience things more, then ideas will flow. Okay? Idea generation is like a river. Okay? You have to make sure that the river keeps on flowing by developing other floodways for the water to flow. If you stop at a particular point, then it's pointless. You need to gain more perspective. Okay? Gaining more perspective allows you to have more insights, to become more innovative, to become more creative. Again, it's not pure genius. You just need to have perspective. You just need to consider other people's point of view. And starting from that, you would actually look into a lot of opportunities if you open your eyes towards these kinds of perspectives. Okay? So... With that being said, I'm David Molina. And again, just a note to leave you guys with. Your perspective determines the manner of your opportunities. If you keep your eyes closed, you'll never see your opportunity. If you stop at one perspective, you'll never see another opportunity. Okay? Look into other perspectives as well. So that's my portion of the day for you guys. Um, I hope you, I hope everything made sense. I hope this was productive for both of us. Thank you and uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sir David. Um, I would just like to point out, Sir, I'm also a bedan. Hi, hello. <laughs> hello, po. <laughs> Pero sa alabang po ako. <laughs> ah, okay. Sige. Ayan. Hello. So, are you in college also? Yes, Sir. I'm in my third year. Ah, uh, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> <Good> luck. <po. laughs> Okay, so um, actually, sir, I just like to point out, po. I like, I actually love what you said. You practice practicality and not just theory, because mm -hmm. it's a A lot of people who would want to start their business would always have the mindset of shoot for the stars or shoot for the mm -hmm. moon. Garan siya lagi. Pero we also have to take note of being practical. Na kung gusto mo yung business yan, kaya mo ba? Your resources mo ba pwede. So that's a very, very good uh, quote from you, sir. Mm -hmm. Ayun. So, 
So, um, <laughs> thank you, sir. Okay, so are you guys ready? Because I'm very, very ready. So you guys can shoot your questions. Here's a chat box. You can either chat here's a chat box or direct message either me or Miss Kiara Yao. So let's wait for the question. So um, siguro, sir, I can start, no? Uh, sure. You said, sir, na you are, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, full-time educator and professor? Yes. Actually, yes. Okay. And, and you are also... Oh, yes, sir. And the second, second, continue. So, yes, to your ah. first question and... Okay. Ha- and you're you also an, an entrepreneur. Yes, sir. In a way, yes. I I tend to see myself maybe not me, as, an, uh, as a person who wants to engage on opportunities. Because there's a common there's a common stereotype when people say entrepreneur. Ay, negosyante. Ay, mayama. It's... <laughs> We, it's something that is embedded in our culture, so we can't really ignore it. Maybe it will change some, some, mm-hmm. somewhere down the road. Pero I'd like to think of myself as someone who engaged in business opportunities. Okay. So, so yes, entrepreneur, but more of opportunistic guy. Okay. How are you able to balance sir, the being a full-time educator and professor and also the business opportunist? that you are, how are you able to balance both? Kasi syempre, pag full-time, sir, parang nandun na lahat ng time mo, eh. So, yes. paano yun, uh-huh. sir? So, okay. So, uh, one of the things that the pandemic did to me, not just, I hope to other people as well, is that it uh, it allowed me to see the importance of multitasking. But, not multitasking in a way that we are all accustomed to like we're playing in this left hand and then we're doing a thesis on the right hand. It's not like that. Okay. When I say multitasking, uh, you tend to source your time in such a way that you allow yourself an easier method of doing two things at once. So for example, um, I have a class during the mornings, but in between breaks, I try to answer some queries just quickly. Okay, so managing your time is very important. Okay, managing your time is very important. There are some cases where I feel, uh, oh my God, this is pressure. Now, there are some cases in which I feel, uh, there's a deadline here, and then you have to make sure that you report on this one, and then you have to make sure that you pass the assignment for the doctorate, and there's a client inquiring about a particular this one. So one thing aside from time, time management is learn how to learn your own workflow. This, this is something that I see some students still lacking to do. Learning your own workflow, okay? It's, we're not requiring you to do things immediately, okay? You are supposed to give you enough time to accomplish a particular task. I'm not sure if your other teachers do that, but I, 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 I try to implement that to my students. I'll give you enough time so that you will know how you work within your statement because based on both perspectives it has angles okay so if you consider yourself the business guy if you're more passionate about business then of course that statement will apply to you of course i think about business i'd rather work for myself and to make sure that my family will earn what i've worked hard on in the future and other generations after my family that's why I'm doing a business. And sure, it will make you money. But that doesn't mean employment will not grant you the same opportunity. There are some positions that are so vital for a particular in, in for, for a particular employee. But these are rare types of positions. There is money and employment. Don't get me wrong. Okay? 
there's there's money in employment but again the statement is still true okay mas marami kang makukuha na benefit kung sarili mong negosyo of course pero hindi ibig sabihin nun wala kang kikitain sa employment there are some people who would rather work than have the stress of doing their own business so it's up to your lifestyle also what do you want what do you prefer at the end of the day as long as you have money there's nothing wrong with it ba i guess yes, that's, that's what counts true. at the end of the day that's again true, perspective yes. again okay yeah, good it's true because there are also diba, there are other people who would prefer na they'd be their own boss yes para lahat yes. hawak nila hindi sila yung na pressure or something no? yes actually there are people who are not equipped or who are not groomed to be an employee and i believe that Meron talaga mga tao na kahit gaano siya kagaling, hindi siya pwedeng maging empleyado. Di ba? Meron din ang mga empleyado na kahit gaano siya kagaling sa school, hindi siya pwedeng mag-start ng business. There are people who are like that. Okay? It takes all sorts of people to make a world. Maraming ganun. So it depends on your perspective. It depends on your priority. It depends on your lifestyle. What makes you happy? Of course. Okay. So... Ay, may mga questions sa comment box. Oo oh, nga, medyo mahaba ito eh. Okay. So, let's go with the first muna, sir, no? So, it says, It's true that in any ad- adversity, there's always an opportunity. Sir David, you mentioned eight industry that has a growth during pandemic times. How about the industry that is not good to enter? How can you advise SMEs that is struggling their business and need to be in digital marketing during this pandemic times? SMEs that is struggling their business and need to be in the digital. Okay, so uh, in terms of business industries, there are some who are particularly affected so much by the pandemic. One of them is the tourism industry. Uh, it's very sad to hear that I just last week, Boracay was open, then the lockdown happened, and then we don't know what will happen. Right? So maybe some of you guys are already... Uh, making your own summer plans, nagpapa-ready na magpa-swab test para pumasa din sa Boracay, di ba? But uh, in terms of uh, some industries, I think you should stay away right now, ha? Right now, I'm not sure. Maybe you should stay away from the hospitality part. Okay? The hospitality part. Not just tourism, but also if you, maybe you're considering Airbnb or maybe you're considering renting a place or making sure that, oh, ito, pwede kang magstay dyan for one day. Di ba parang mga process ng Airbnb, mga ganun. Mga day-to-day, magre-rent kami, mga ganun. Because what we're, what's happening right now, the pandemic has disallowed us to, commun- uh, to be in contact with each other. So the trend right now is to make sure that we don't see each other as much as possible. And the hospitality industry, its very nature depends on you looking at the person seeing the person experiencing the person what uh, kung gaano siya katangkad kung ano siya diba it's it's a hospitality industry you have to understand the client and that is very challenging in the pandemic don't get me wrong there are still some people who are into that meron pa ring mga nagpaparenta meron pa rin naman mga nag airbnb but it's very difficult that is why if you are to shift kuna nagpaparenta ka you are to shift to the dig- on a digital landscape good for you but it's going to be very hard there are a lot of adjustments that's needed you need to provide more content more pictures you have to make sure that what you're trying to offer can be transmuted into the digital landscape so ingat ingat lang kayo kung gusto niyo magpa airbnb kayo kayo with your friends ah tara let's rent it out wag muna not at least not now okay not now maybe some point in time but not now okay So I hope, uh, sorry, Professor Reynan Guerrero. So hello, fellow educator. Hi po. Good afternoon. <laughs> okay. So sir, meron din tayo next question here, which is actually kind of related dun sa statement mo sa last question. No? Mm-hmm. It says here kasi na how feasible is it for yung physical stores to shift to digital? Yung, okay. Tapos there is also here na you provide yung strengths and weaknesses po nung ganung setup. Oh, so uh, more of advantage and disadvantage. Okay, sige. Mm-mm. So, 
one of the things that's common right now is what we call uh, actually it's creating a new market segment. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys heard of the term domestic shoppers, the people who search Lazada and Shopee as a pastime. Yung, yung mga nagsasearch lang kasi wala lang. Diba? Parang and guilty ako nun, sir. Yeah, some of you are guilty of that. It's actually becoming a demographic right now. It's actually becoming a market segment. So, um, it changed the retail landscape entirely. Okay? So, what's happening right now is the common misunderstanding that if you own a physical store, it's going to be very bad for you. No. Hindi ganon. Kasi pandemic eh, di ba? Hindi ba dapat pandemic, dapat mas, as much as possible magkalayuan tao? Yes. But it's not, uh, no, that doesn't mean it's a complete disadvantage. Okay? There's this thing we call in retail, uh, omnichannel. You can search it in Google if you want. It's something called omnichannel. What, what omnichannel is, is that you balance the physical store and you balance the online aspect. It's something that's being done by Nike, by most of the big corporations, by uh, maybe Jollibee, I'm not sure. But, mo- but most of the physical stores, yun ang ginagawa. They make sure that they have an online presence. Okay? Because at the end of the day, if you have just an online presence, it won't be a good shopping experience. Kulang. Sir, di ba makikita mo naman sa online yung mga products? Yes. But what if you had questions and what if you need to see the product? That's where, that's where the physical store comes in. Also, take note, most stores right now are shifting their idea of retail. Narinig nyo na yung term na experience stores. Diba? Samsung has it, experience stores. Diba? And some, sila Huawei, experience stores. These are the types of stores that when you enter, uy, it's like you entered into another world. Diba? And these types of experience stores, they don't flood their store with products. Diba? Isa, dalawa, yun lang nakalagay. And then, it's just there for you to experience the product. So, it goes hand in hand. You see something in the internet, you go to the store to check it out. That is the balance of omnichannel retailing. Pag may nakita ka, you're interested in it, hindi ka convinced sa internet, punta ka sa physical store. Sir, would that not be more costly kapag may physical store? Actually, no. Diba? There are still some advantages kapag may physical store. Kapag wala kang malapitan, hindi nagre-reply yung message sa'yo. Kunwari, may message mo si ganito. Diba? Hindi siya nagre-reply sa Facebook. Punta ka sa branch niya. At least alam mo kung there's still that instance for you to get to know them. Diba? Nakatatak pa rin sila sa utak mo. May store yan dyan eh. Hindi lang online store yan. May store yan dyan. So there's a balance. Okay? It's important for you to keep that balance. Okay. So... <clears throat> Okay. Sir, may um, nag-direct sige. message sa akin. Um, yung question is, would it be advisable for startups to cut off their prices to attract customers since it's a pandemic? Or should they stick to original price? Ang ganda no question. Okay, sir. okay. I like that question. Um, this, ac- this question is actually suited for you, uh, for you younger entrepreneurs. Okay? In marketing, We always say that you should provide more value to your customers. And that's good. Diba? You should, if you can cut the price, cut the price. Pero uh, consider your resource and consider the behavior of your target market. For example, your resources. Sabihin natin na yes, you can cut prices. Mag-offer ka ng uh, market penetration pricing which, in which, sige, 100 pesos siya, so gawin natin 80 pesos ngayon for a limited period of time. That's good. Okay? If you can cater to that, kung kaya ng resources mo, kung kaya ng pera mo na malugi for a period of time, it's up to you. Eventually, ang balik niyan, brand equity eh. Di ba? Sisikat yung pangalan mo. You don't get money, pero sikat pangalan mo. As long as the product is good. But if you have, if you don't have the resources, don't try it. Okay? Alam kong magandang maglinis ng pangalan. It's good to, it's, it feels good, di ba? Nakakadagdag sa self-esteem to know that you own a product that is known by other people. But if it comes at a cost na hindi mo kayang kargahin, then be practical. There are lots of options for you to get to promote your product, lalo na kung bago siya, without cutting prices. 
The second one is the behavior of your target market. Not every market segment responds to that type of, uh, not more every market segment responds to that type of promotion. If you are trying to position yourself as an entry level, uh, entry level product within the industry or within the market, okay yun. Kasi yun ang competition eh, pababaan ng presyo ang competition. But if you price or if you situate yourself in a low price and then your target market did not respond favorably, baka ang isipin yan, ah, pababa ng presyo. Diba? Baka mamaya, oh, is this original? You'll never know. There are lots of questions. Legit ba to? Diba? Hindi mo alam. So people tend to look for reviews. People tend to scrutinize. People tend to have that question mark. Okay? And the next thing, baka mamaya, ang sinabi mo, limited period of time from March to August. So pag September, nasanay na yung mga tao sa 80 pesos price mo. September, ibabalik mo ng 80. Eh, di mababad trip sa'yo. Ala, 80 pesos na eh. Sayang. Diba? Parang, parang okay. Sige, we had fun. Relationship nga, madaling palitan eh. Presyo pa, pamimili pa kaya ng products. Diba? I, Bakit ganun, sir? It's, hindi, it's, it's implied. Because marketing has a lot of things, has a lot of things in common with uh, fostering relationships. Ganun talaga. Diba? We've all experienced this type of deal. Pero that's the fact there. How the person would react or how the target market would react and if the resource is capable of carrying such load. Kung hindi, again, be practical. Huwag mong pairalin yung yabang mo na, ha, may bago kami, nakasay. Kung hindi naman kaya, huwag mong gawin. Mag-offer ka ng something new o meron kang additional one hour na ganito or kaya something. Bigay ka ng rip, huwag naman ribbon. Diba? O bigay ka ng something meaningful. Or, ano, the, may migay ka ng free drinks or free food, gano'n. Basta wag mong gagawin yun kung hindi kayang isustain ng business mo. Be practical tayo, okay? So, um, meron dito sa po. <laughs> like, dalawang questions po siya, sir. Tapos ipaghalo ko na lang. Kasi parang similar din po siya. Sige um, lang. Ano po yung advice nyo that you can give to aspiring individuals who are doubting their own business or student pa lang na gusto mag-start ng business because of the pandemic? Like, saan siya dapat mag-target in terms of anong business itatayo niya and capital na din po ang ma-recommend niya? Ah, okay. So, uh, first one, in terms of capital, I'm not sure kasi hindi ko alam yung line of business niya. So, it varies kasi. But in terms of, you mentioned earlier the confidence part. Bad. Someone doubting yes. his, or her, his or her idea. So, I've been an advocate of this one. So, I believe that every student or every person must be confident at all times. Take note, confident ha, hindi mayabang. It's okay for you to doubt your idea. Okay? It's okay for you to doubt your idea. Pandemic, wala ka magagawa. Mas malas ka ba sa COVID? Kung yun naman eh. Diba? You have, kaya nga ang sabi natin, you have to adjust. But don't lose sight of your confidence. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be down. One day, two days, one week, okay lang. Wala masama doon. It opens, actually, it helps you consider perspectives. But don't lose sight of your confidence. more capital. If it's a manufacturing enterprise, most likely kailangan mo ng mas malaking capital. If it's a merchandising enterprise, look into your suppliers, maybe. Services, medium to high level para safe. Kahit nasabihin natin low cost, medium to high level para safe. It's good to have that buffer. Mm, meron tayo dito, sir. Connected siya dun sa doubting phase. Ano? Mm, it mm. says the doubting comes from mostly the fear of risk. Hmm. So, anong pwede mong ma-suggest dun, sir, na yung takot niya sa risk because of pandemic, dun nagsistart yung doubt niya? 
So okay. So thank you for that. Um, ganito yan. I mentioned earlier perspective. Okay. If you think about it, everything you do has risks. Okay. Everything you do has risk. Even when you wake up, even when you sleep, meron kang risk. It might be yes. a minimal risk, pero it's still a risk. Diba? Mm-hmm. We can't delete risk. Hindi mo siya matatanggal sa buhay mo. Of course, sabi ko kanina, you can be sad, you can be scared, you can feel all sorts of emotions. That's the effect of risk. Okay, that's the effect of risk. But what counts is what you do in terms of that situation. Normally, normally, based on observation ah, when people are afraid, that's when most people are ready. Because that's when most people tend to criticize them. Ah, ano kaya pwede po magawin? Ah, ganun, ganun, ganun. Mm-hmm. Hindi mauubos ang tanong mo sa sarili mo. But at least you get to assess yourself. You get to go to the next step. O nga, no? Ano pala ako? Takot ako doon before. And then just keep doing it. ba? Diba? Lahat mm-hmm. naman, lahat tayo. Nung ako rin nag-start ako ng business, my God, what am I doing? ba? Diba? Lalo nung walang nagre-reply, walang bumibili, walang nag inquire wag yan. Natatakot ka talaga. But it's part of the thing. And now when you look back, <laughs> o nga, no? Ganun pala yan. It's part of the thing. It's part of the journey that's included. So if you're afraid, good. Do what you have to do. <laughs> is not fearing risks, but just taking it as it may come. Okay. So, if it were up to me, risk is always there. Eh. So, mm-hmm. fear of risk is always there. Hindi mo matatanggal yan. It's up, I think if you were a good entrepreneur, you know how to manage your fear. You know how to manage your risk. Diba? Kasi hindi mo matatanggal yan. Parang yung mga deadlines lang sa atin sa school. Hindi mo matatanggal yan. That's why you have to learn how to manage it. Okay? It doesn't mean you can get rid of it pag minanage mo. You just have to work around things. Diba? You have to learn the solutions. You have to look into different types of methods kung gusto mo, different types of solutions. Do what you need to do. But you have your end goal. Diba? Being driven kahit natatakot ka, that's part of the job, tuloy mo pa rin, matututo ka rin eventually. Okay? okay. How to handle, naman po yung competitive mo na, halatang halata po. Ayan, sir. Okay, basahin ko, ah, wait lang. How to Sige handle pa. naman po yung competitor mo na halatang halata po na ginagaya yung products offered. Kasi yun nga po, nakikita na mabili yung ganun sa, ganung product sa amin. So, Okay. Uh, I need to know more about it. Kasi kung ang industry mo talaga ay competitive, it's up to, it's not up to your product. Meron kasi mga product that are considered fast moving and convenient, such as FM, FMCGs. Di ba? Pag nagbenta ka ng candy, pag masarap, gagayahin yan. Pag nagbenta ka ng fishbowl, pag masarap, gagayahin yan. Di ba? Because your product is not innovated. Your product is not innovative. Um, If you guys are familiar with Porter's Five Forces, na andun yun eh, yung framework na yun eh. So, ang mapapansin nyo, kapag yung product nyo ay mabilis magaya, that means your pro- there's something wrong with the product. Hindi siya ganun ka-unique. Kaya siya mabilis magaya. Kung gusto mong kumawala sa panggagaya, you have to offer added value. Can be through promotions, can be through another bond. Ikaw bahala. It's up to you how to strategize. But you have to add value. Okay. You have to provide something na hindi pinoprovide ng competitor mo. That way, pwede mong ma-differentiate yung sarili mo. Ba? For example, Burger King and McDo. Ewan ko kung saan kayo papanig, pero for me, mas gusto ko yung lasa ni Burger King. Parehas na product, parehas burger, mas gusto ko yung lasa ng Burger King. Diba? Kasi nadi-differentiate nila 
yung kanila. Sinabi nila, frame gri- flame grilled burgers. Okay, sige, try natin. Diba? So, yun. Uh, ne- is it nece- okay, sabasahin ko ba isa. Is it necessary po ba na mag-segment ng market when you are starting up your business? And how can you effectively position your business? Um, in terms of positioning, uh, it's related to the unique value na meron sa company mo. Kung ano yung binibigay mo na wala yung iba. Kasi nakadepende yung positioning mo dun eh. In terms of segmentation, meron kasi tayong tinatawag the target market, your definite target market, and pwede rin merong mga other users. So, if you're a startup, being practical means kung ka- pwede siya sa kanya, sige, offer mo lang yung product mo. It's totally counterpart sa ina- inaaral natin sa marketing. Kasi di ba sabi natin sa marketing na theory, eto ang target market, mag-focus ka sa kanya. There's nothing wrong with that. Pero kung startup ka, kung kanino applicable yung product mo, go lang. Try mo lang. Diba? Yun yung napansin ko nung nag, ano eh, nung nag-provide kami So they say nga na the only constant thing in businesses is change. Okay. And that is a continuous risk nga naman, ano? Mm-hmm. So what is your advice in terms of business recovery and continuity? Okay. Business recovery is ganito. Um, taking a loss is uh, taking a loss has varying effects on different types of people. Ba? Hindi naman tayo lahat nagre-respond at the same way kung paano mag-respond yung ibang tao. Pag nalaman mong nakikipag-change all yung boyfriend mo, ito ang gagawin mo. Yung iba, wala silang ginagawa. So it's, it varies. But in terms of losing a business, I think it hurts more kasi nagpundar ka dun eh. Diba? Nagpundar ka dun, pinagbuhusan mo yung oras mo dun, it most likely it affected your family the decisions the adjustments and all but ganito i if you lost the business or if you experienced the loss of a business and if it took so much toll on you kung hindi ka makaka-continue there's nothing wrong with that okay the last thing that i want for entrepreneurs to feel is that after they lost the business they feel like a loser no hindi You lost your business, that doesn't make you a loser. Welcome to the majority of the people. That's what living is. Natatalo ka talaga. Part yan ng, part yan eh. Part yan ng buhay eh. Okay? If you want to pursue, go. Pero kung hindi, it's okay. I understand. Ganun siya eh. Same way kung bakit iba-iba ang tao. Diba? I would advise you to, again, siguro kung hindi mo na kaya mag-business ngayon, okay lang. Pero look into it after one year, two years, three years, four years, five years along the road, di ba? Because there's always this excitement that businesses will, pro- or, or doing business provides. Alam niyo yung feeling na nakaisip kayo ng magandang idea, tapos baka yung idea niyo napaka, uy, pwede ko, di ba yung ganun? <laughs> It sparks your excitement, di ba? Mm-hmm. Natutuwa ka. Ganun siya eh. That's, mm-hmm. that's the effect of this. That's the effect of knowing that you have that innovation, knowing that you have that perspective na, uy, o nga, no? Eh, wait lang. Nalugi na ako sa business dati. Pero maganda talaga yung idea ko, eh. Now you're more than ready. Nalugi ka na dati. Now you know your lesson. Now you know what you should do and what you should not do. Ano yung pwede mo i-prioritize? Nalugi ka nga dati, but that's okay. It will help you in the future eventually. There's this term that they frequently use a business. Akala ko sa credit card lang, pero sa business din pala. The term is uh, charge to experience. Kung narinig nyo na yun. Charge to experience. Napagastos ka ng malaki, nalugi ka, wala, charge to experience yan. Ganun talaga eh. That's part of growing up. That's part of the business landscape. So, ayun. Yeah. Okay, so... 
Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your very informative inputs that you've shared to me and the people in the Zoom call. I do apologize for other questions that we could not entertain due to time constraint. You know? So uh, with this, let's all give Mr. John David O. Molina a virtual round of applause and an e-certificate of appreciation for giving us such an inspiration today. Ayan, here's your certificate, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. So please do not forget to create an, an ACE Commerce account and through our website, acecommerce.org, as we give free courses and announcements for future webinars where you can RSVP. The link of the website will be sent through the chat box. Please go to the site, create an account, and constantly check the website for updates. Before I let you all go, and before the tech booth ends the Google, uh, and before we all go, I actually just like to uh, ask for a quick photo of uh, everyone here sa webinar natin ngayon. Ayan. Okay. Hello, everyone. Ayan, ang dami pala. Okay, so uh, with this, the tech booth would also send the Google form for your e-certificates, which will be here sa chat box. The link will be there. So, unahin mo natin yung picture and then mag Insert na tayo, no? Okay. So if you can turn on your cameras, Miss Kiara Mayao, will you be taking the photo or ako? No, hindi ko ba sa atin si Miss Kiara Mayao? Miss Kiara. Ayan, wala ati, Miss Kiara. Can you guys hear me? Ayun. <laughs> there, okay, you're here now. <laughs> oh, wait lang. Before I take a photo, I would like to ask Sir Molina if he would um share his Facebook or email so that you guys can contact him. Kasi ang daming question na na-receive ko. Yeah. Sure. Oh, um, how will I... Link na lang ba? Sasend ko na lang sa'yo, Kiara, yung link? Or... Kahit ano, sir. Dito, ay, ay, ano na lang. Dito na lang sa chat box. So, sa part, chat box, sir. Sa mga, na, okay. Uh, wait lang, wait lang, wait lang. Before we take a photo and uh, evaluate. This one. Pasensya na kayo. Hindi ko pa in-edit yung link ng aking Facebook. So, wait, the Facebook ko? Facebook ng business. Facebook ko ba? Facebook mo. And then promote your business na rin. Siyempre. Hindi, tingnan nyo na lang. <laughs> tingnan nyo na lang. Ayaw namin, ayaw namin directly yung nagpo-promote. Na, Guys, like nyo yung page. Hindi kami ganun. <laughs> <laughs> Parang medyo ano siya. Okay lang na aware kayo sa amin. Hindi namin kami, hindi namin itutulak yung sarili namin sa inyo. Di ba? Intrusive. Ayun. So, ito po. If you'd like to ask me questions, feel free. Free consultation, o, oh, di ba? Wala kayong binayan. <laughs> Wait, I'll take a photo, okay? Till, ano lang, dun sa mga may video. So, okay. One, one, two, three. Pogi ni Kirby, o. Oh. So, yan, dito si Kirby. O nga, eh. Kita ko nga, eh. So, hello sa mga students ko. Ito na si Kiara, no, eh. Okay, I won't take a photo na dun sa mga di naka-on cam. Kasi, hello? Oh my God, my internet is slow. Hello po. Good afternoon. I can see you guys. My internet is so okay. Um, answer nyo na lang yung evaluation forms. I sent it in the chat box. Can you send it again, Kiara? Medyo na tabunan mo siya. Really? If kaya. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Okay, kakasend mo lang. Magal ang internet ko. Grabe. <laughs> oh, another opportunity I... na naman yan. Diba? <laughs> okay. 